This video has a week ahead outlook for the United States, including who will be stormy, who will be hot, and who won't. Stay tuned for all that information. I want to start this video with a look at the 6 hour precipitation increments expected through the week ahead. This will show us which areas are expected to be active and which areas will be drier at times. And I'll dissect all of these patterns as well as the temperature pattern in more detail as we go deeper into the video. Here we go overviewing the future radar as we go into our Monday, June 2nd of 2025. You could see that with the exception of Florida, a lot of the far eastern US and then the far western US is expected to be on the drier side. But we will see a system and a cold front moving through some parts of the Mountain West, the Four Corners region, and out into the plains, and that is going to cause a disruption with some active weather expected in these zones that I'm circling. That's going to include the Four Corners stretching up to Montana and Wyoming, and then on over here, especially into the Front Range part of the plains. That's going to be your best chance zone for some severe weather, but some of that could even extend into the Upper Midwest along an eastward advancing cold front. Speaking of that cold front, that is only going to continue to move east as we go through Monday night and into our Tuesday, where a lot of the plains will get in on a chance of showers and storms at some point from Tuesday morning through Tuesday evening. In fact, that cold front is expected to be the main boundary to watch across a lot of the U.S. for Tuesday. From Wisconsin down to Texas and in points in between, it looks like that's going to be the best chance zone with daytime heating for some of our storms to redevelop and re-intensify and be possibly even severe in some cases. As Florida, we could see a few pop-up storms along an old remnant boundary that will be continuing there on our Tuesday. A few storms could still be possible back into some parts of the Mountain West, but other than that, most zones in those white shades that you see on screen right now are expected to be dry through the majority, if not all, of the day on Tuesday. And the same will go in any of the zones where you see whites on screen here as we go into our Wednesday. Wednesday looks a little bit more complicated, and in fact, the end of the week is a little bit more complicated in general due to information regarding the speed of that cold front once it gets past the central plains. As of right now, the main cold front I've been talking about in this video so far will likely be draped from some parts of the far south central U.S. up to at least the Great Lakes and in points in between by our Wednesday afternoon and evening. But some guidance is indicating that we could see this front be a little bit broader in nature as early as Wednesday, and that could mean we get some isolated storms at some point Wednesday or Wednesday night already into parts of the Ohio Valley and the interior northeast. So don't be surprised if that's a forecast change we see as we get closer in time to that particular day. Also on Wednesday, note that the southeast U.S. will see an old cold front that it will have been already impacting Florida on Monday and Tuesday, trying to expand a little bit as it is near stationary in those zones. Southern Alabama, South Georgia, and the low country of South Carolina could get a better chance of pop-up storms on Wednesday as a result of that lingering boundary even see some new low pressure back into the front range region of the U.S. and the southwest, and that could bring some pop-up showers and storms in those zones in particular as well. Active zones in broader corridors will be the bigger trend as we go beyond Wednesday and into Thursday, as we'll likely see a mesh of all of those systems I just listed trying to come closer to each other at times. As we go into our Thursday, some focal points for storms could be in the far southeast with that continuing boundary, the cold front stretching now into the northeast U.S., the Ohio Valley, and the Midwest as it continues slowly moving from the west to the east as we go deeper through the week. Back into the front range, some pop-up showers and storms could be on the stronger side on Thursday, and then we'll do it all over again into Friday with more storms storms likely from the Central Plains over to the Midwest to the Northeast as we see multiple boundaries lingering around. I'll touch a little bit on how that could also induce a flooding risk that will be later in the video. Before I discuss some of the specific days of the week and their possible hazards in more detail, I do want to show you how the main cold front I've been talking about so far in this update, how it's going to impact your temperatures. And you can see right along and ahead of our front, we are likely going to be seeing a warmer than average temperatures moving up into the upper Midwest on a day like Monday, where we could be around 10 to 15 degrees above average there, while temperatures will be 10 to 15 degrees on the other side of average. Yep, below average in Montana and the Dakotas. And of course, it's between those two areas where we see the best contrast in the temperatures and right along at boundaries where we get contrast in temperatures, that's where you get storms to fire. What you're going to notice is as the week goes on, that general boundary is going to broaden out and push east. And that's exactly why we're going to see broader chances of storms over more zones by the time we get towards Thursday and Friday. Let's now take some time to focus in on the specific zones expecting severe weather along and ahead of especially that cold front over the next few days, starting with a look at our Monday and Monday night time frame, where a broad quarter of the central U.S. is looking at a level one to level two of five risk on the Storm Prediction Center's risk scale. 
The peak area of concern is in the yellow slight risk issued by the Storm Prediction Center, and that includes north central parts of Texas and the Panhandle, as well as the Panhandle of Oklahoma, where from Plainview, Texas, up to Guymon, Oklahoma, as well as Woodward. You do need to be concerned for at least a wind and hail threat that will be on the elevated side in comparison to regions around you. The same types of threats will extend up here through parts of Garden City and Dodge City in Kansas. You're under a level 2 of 5 threat, and that threat goes all the way through a lot of central Nebraska, including North Platte, Lexington, and Grand Island, Norfolk, Nebraska, and then getting on up there towards Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That's also a level 2 of 5 zone as issued by the Storm Prediction Center from the time of this video. Even on up into far southwestern Minnesota, including the west side of Wilmer, looking at a level 2 of 5 risk and a level 1 of 5 risk, of course, surrounding that. Before we dive into some more in-depth timing of the Monday and Monday night storms, here's a look at the projected storm energy expected to develop with mainly daytime heating ahead of our front and our dry line throughout the day. You can see that in a lot of the peak part of our risk zone, this HRRR model is indicating that from west central Minnesota through southeastern parts of South Dakota, and then the rest of these zones I'm circling in black that extend all the way back down to the South Central Plains. We are going to see a broad quarter of at least 1,000 joules per kilogram of CAPE, that is convective available potential energy, or what may be better referred to as storm fuel for the purpose of this video. Many spots in the yellow and orange are going to be exceeding 1,500, 2,000, 2,500 plus joules per kilogram of CAPE, and that indicates a strong amount of daytime heating and resulting instability that will help lift up our thunderstorm updrafts. Anything that forms along the front and then the dry line moving in from the west and the north central and central plains as well as into the front range region will have the potential to go severe as a result of this ingredient in particular. Diving deeper now into some timing of the possible storms with this HRRR model, this will give you an idea of what to expect in your neck of the woods. Not much severe weather, if any, is expected as storms will likely just be in general thunderstorm fashion as they possibly push through parts of North Dakota along a low pressure system there. We'll possibly see some storms in western New Mexico that are currently not expected to be severe as we go through around the noontime hour of our Monday. But once we get deeper through the afternoon into the evening, down through the front range region of Colorado and then extending down into parts of New Mexico, western Texas, as we see the dry line pushing east in those zones, we'll likely see a mess of showers and storms. This is why tornadoes NATO potential generally looks low, but as we continue to see winds elevating and pushing in a general southwest to northeasterly direction as you go out through the atmosphere that will help in pushing along clusters and some segments of storms more than likely from at least Kansas down to north central Texas. That's going to be four, five, six, seven o'clock. We'll likely see multiple of those clusters of storms pushing through those zones on our Monday afternoon and evening. We'll also see storms continuing to expand through northern Kansas and especially along the cold front up here into Nebraska over to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and maybe even a little bit further east from there. And that is why that is the heart and the widest part of our slight risk zone right now. Damaging winds of 60 plus miles per hour and large hail one inch plus in diameter could be possible, if not likely, in scattered fashion. Stockville, Kearney, Grand Island, Columbus, Nebraska, these could be some of the hardest hit zones through even at the dusk hours and thereafter into our Monday night. We could even see a few severe storms continuing past the marginal risk zone, I'd argue, into some parts of central Iowa by the time we get into the early morning hours of our Tuesday, although a lot of the storms through this broad quarter that will remain active in the central plains look to lose their umph by the time we get to around 5, 6, and 7 on our Tuesday morning. Here's a look at the Storm Prediction Center severe weather outlook for Tuesday and Tuesday night that has been issued as of the time of this video. You can see, once again, a level 1 to level 2 severe weather risk is expected as we'll see some new storms as well as some reintensification of old storms likely through the day on our Tuesday as well as into Tuesday night. The peak part of the risk zone, which is currently the slight risk, that starts in north central Texas, where as I zoom in, you can see that includes parts of the Abilene region, Weatherford, the northwest Dallas suburbs. I wouldn't be surprised if Dallas ends up getting included in the level two, though. Wichita Falls, Texas, getting up to Ardmore, Oklahoma, and Ada, Oklahoma City, Tulsa. These are some zones set to be in that level two of five slight risk as of now, if this risk zone stays the same. Springfield, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, up to Kirksville, looking at a level two. And that level two goes all the way on up here through the east part of Iowa and the Cedar Rapids region, towards the Davenport, Illinois region, and even on up towards Madison, Wisconsin. I wouldn't even be surprised if Milwaukee ends up getting upgraded from the level 1 to level 2. Another broad corridor for severe weather on Tuesday, and we probably won't see severe weather stop there. I'll talk more about the ingredients and timing for severe weather on Tuesday and Tuesday night, as well as specific details for severe weather later in the week, probably in another video coming up on our Monday. For now, let's focus in on some of that timing for the storms as we go through the rest of the week. I've already done this, but this gives you a look at the 24-hour increments of precipitation forecasted by the Weather Prediction Center, so you can see where flooding is going to have the best chance of occurring as well. Where we see severe storms, we could also see flooding through the nation's midsection out of Monday into Tuesday. Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, and Missouri, these are 
some zones where possibly multiple clusters of storms or just one heavy cluster could move through. And at one to three inches of rain look likely in a lot of these zones. Locally, higher amounts can't be fully ruled out. So at least isolated flooding looks to be possible smack dab in the nation's midsection as we go through the first couple days of this week. From there, as we go through the Tuesday through early to mid Wednesday uh, time frame of storms from North Texas up to Lake Michigan and in points in between, including central Missouri now, that's where it looks like severe weather will be likely, as well as some isolated flooding during that time frame. And we'll continue to watch at least some moderate rain totals, possibly even some heavier locally higher amounts continuing along that front, which will be extended from the Midwest over to the Northeast by the end of this week. Now let's quickly talk temperatures to end this video, specifically looking at the forecasted highs for the next few days. Starting on Monday, you can see that it looks like we are going to see a big corridor of broad, warm temperature levels. And of course, that is because we are going to be ahead of the cold front with a ridge in the jet stream for the time being over a lot of the nation's midsection from parts of the far eastern part of Colorado through the central plains over to the Mississippi Valley, lots of upper 80s and even some low 90s will be in place. And those low 90s will extend ahead of your cold front in a thin corridor all the way to eastern Minnesota northern Wisconsin, as well as the upper peninsula of Michigan. Those zones will likely be breaking record highs as indicated by the boxes on screen. Zones that will be a little bit cooler are going to be in the east coast region where we're right behind a recent cold front with 70s in parts of the mid-Atlantic and northeast. We will see lots of 70s in the valleys back in the southwestern U.S. as well. And a similar trend will continue there with 70s in the valleys of the southwest on Tuesday. But look at what happens in the north central plains. Let me go back to Monday and then to Tuesday. 90 to 95 over a lot of central Nebraska on our Monday and then down to 60 to 65 in that same region for a high on Tuesday. Out ahead of that cold front though, still noticeably warmer than average with mid and upper 80s and low 90s extending on up to the Lake Michigan vicinity even as we go towards our Tuesday. That's gonna be flirting with near record levels, I can tell you that. By Wednesday, the warmth will be especially confined to around the eastern third of the country, the Mississippi River and points eastbound, as well as the far southern corridor from California all the way to Texas and points eastbound. 80s and 90s once again in a lot of the maroon shaded zones. With that being said, that's all I have for this video. Here's your reminder to hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you in the next update. God bless.